Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the radio we talked about last week, the TID radio, TDH8, available in ham radio or GMRS, uh, it's been pulled from the Amazon market. It's been pulled from the TID radio website, and we're going to talk all about it. And I think it's only fair to give an update based upon what TID radios has told me. And if you're not familiar with what's going on, here's a brief recap. TID Radio sends me an email, and they say we want you to not only just uh, get this radio for free, but we want you to test it, and we want you to tell us any bugs that are all over the firmware. And then, uh, hey, would you send us a video that says, I'm Ham Radio, dude, and I love this radio. And, and uh, long story short. Long story short, the radio does have bugs in the firmware, and that's not a huge deal because those could be fixed. And we're going to talk about all that here in just a second. But, A, the battery's not really 3,000 milliamp hours. It's uh, 18 watt hours, but... Uh, you know, that's a deceptive kind of practice right there. Not a huge deal again, but then you put on this little FCC ID here and uh, the radio's not really FCC certified. And why do they do that? Well, this is just my opinion, but uh, what I will tell you is Amazon requires an FCC ID for any device that's being sold on Amazon. And uh, so these companies or these people just slap on FCC IDs and they're like, hey, it's cool. Because all they have to do is put the FCC ID in that Amazon spot. And Amazon doesn't have an API or any way, for whatever reason, of actually having some script run that says, oh, that FCC ID doesn't exist. Or, oh, that FCC ID exists, but it's not the right model. Uh, it would be really easy because there is this thing called the FCC database, which is available online. Anybody can access. However, back to the radio. I did more testing on the Spectrum Purity, which uh, we'll get to after this right here. First, I do want to talk about... The updates that were provided me by TID Radio. Now, first they asked me to pull my video, which it's not going to happen. I'm sorry, but that if I pull my video, that would mean I'm dishonest and all my viewers out there would then not trust me. And, uh, well, I kind of enjoy doing this. So issue number one was the, uh, the up and the down arrows. If you recall, if you watched the video, hitting up would bring you down, hitting down would bring you up. The easiest way to explain it would be if you were on memory mode and you were on channel 10 and you hit up. Here on the western side of the world, we believe that uh, hitting up means you go to channel 11. Hitting up in our scenario with the radio would bring us down to channel 9, for example. Now, uh, according to them, though, there's been a firmware update and that has been corrected. So great. Uh, I just wanted to be able to provide everybody the information that allegedly that's been corrected. Issue number two, though, they're talking about the microphone effect. They're talking about the mic gain. The mic sensitivity on this thing is bad. Now, I have in good faith knowledge that people have previously reported this poor microphone audio to TID Radio. I'm not going to name any names, but you know who you are. And so they chose to ignore that. And now they have to send this back to the factory because it's become more publicly known. It was going to become known anyway at some point. My concern is, is if you have to send this back to the factory and they have to redesign anything or add or, or modify electrical components, what about all those people who just bought this on Prime Day? Do they just have to live with garbage audio? Next, they talk about uh, the issue with OD Master. And so if you guys don't know, this is a Bluetooth programmable radio. Uh, however, every phone that I've tried, new or old, every tablet that I've tried, new or old, it, OD Master just wasn't available or compatible with that device. I've been informed by people online as well as TID Radio and number uh, three here that uh, the, there was a bug in the program and it's been resolved it does show now on multiple devices that I can download it. I'm no longer going to download it, but it does show that it is capable of being downloaded. So, hey, good job on fixing that. I'll post a link below so you can get the full text and actually read it. Uh, but in short, I'm just going to summarize a couple of things here. The software respects and protects your personal privacy. Okay, well then, scope of application is number one. And then under there, 1A is... When you use the software's network services, the software automatically receives and records the information on your mobile phone, including, but not limited to, your network status, language used, access date and time, software and hardware characteristics information, and your needs, web records, and other data. If that's not a catch-all, especially with the, but not limited to, I don't know what is, right? And we can go on and we could read it because there is a lot more in here that's kind of a little bit concerning. But don't worry, this software will not disclose your information to untrusted third parties, even though uh, they don't say what an untrusted third party is and whose discretion is it. 
and I probably don't see everything that somebody else might see. So check it out. Uh, you know, hey, uh, when using the software, yeah, you will inevitably disclose your personal information to the counterparty or potential counterparty, such as your contact information or postal address. Now, don't forget, it also shares your contacts with them, too. <laughs> and has permission to use your camera and has permission to use your microphone. Uh, oh, yeah, that's to talk to friends because I really want to talk to my friends on an app that all I really want to do is program a stupid radio. Now, if somebody had a network that uh, was capable of being isolated and also a fresh install of this software on a fresh install of a phone, maybe you could sniff the network traffic and see how often it's phoning home and maybe even what kind of data it's sending. I'm not the smartest guy, but uh, let me know. I'm kind of curious. I can't harp on it all day though, so let's go to the next one. And they talk about the frequency window size problem in the writing software. What is that? Uh, well, I reported in the last video about how if you expand out the software in Windows, it doesn't actually expand out the Excel-like spreadsheet where you put all your frequency information on. They're going to work on getting that fixed allegedly. And uh, also uh, allegedly support for Chirp is going to be possible here in the future as well. So that is another step forward provided they even do fix that software. But Chirp is a big deal anyway, right? So options uh, five, six, and seven actually have to do all with the software. And instead of reading them, they're optimizing the software of Windows to make it more user interface friendly, meaning like if I expand a window out, it's not just gonna expand the window and leave the programming area this big. The programming area should expand with the actual expansion of the software. Uh, which number seven does say that they added the option of adjusting or they're going to add the option of adjusting the sensitivity of the walkie talkie microphone in the frequency writing software. And then they say the volume of the new batch of H8 has been adjusted. I will ask the technical department if it can be achieved. Um, so um, the new batch, I don't know if that was because they did a fix in the hardware or if this was a software fix, which brings us back up to our point of number two. Uh, if it was just a software fix, uh, it should be firmware, right? And that would mean that we don't have to worry about that electrical component thing. But I I'm still not sure because number two sounds like they had to send it to uh, the, the factory in order for it to get fixed. And that would, to me, mean that they had to replace electronic components. Next up, we talk about the Trojan virus. Long story short, uh, one of the firmwares I got for the update of the ham radio firmware was detected in Windows as a Trojan virus, still is actually. And uh, I believe it was a false positive, but I also don't want to go any further with said firmware. And it creates a lot of concern. So uh, they're working over there with technical support to, to resolve the issue that it's detected as a Trojan. And remember on UHF, I said that this radio only puts out 0 0.06 watts. That's right. Not six tenths of a watt, but 0 0.06 watts. Is that tens? Hundreds? Six hundredths of a watt? Let me Google reading decimals. Six one hundredths of a watt. Uh, that's pretty low, right? But the next issue, they say that the FCC problems will be solved and will take about six weeks. Let's stop there for a second. One of the things I didn't show or mention rather in my last video was the spectrum purity for UHF. Now, we did show VHF, and it obviously, if I did all the tests correct, and I'll say that again, just like I said in my last video, uh, it didn't actually meet FCC regulations. Uh, the spurious emissions, if you will, were uh, just a tad too high. But on UHF, they're just a tad or too high. Everything looks good, a nice clean signal until you get to the 800 megahertz range, as you can see here. And uh, that's where we have a harmonic that's nearly the same as the fundamental emission. What does that mean? Long story short, you're essentially able to transmit on uh, two different frequencies at the same time. So while you're transmitting ham radio or roughly around there, you could also be interfering with your public safety uh, dramatically. Finally, we talk about the FCC problem will be resolved in about six weeks. And I want to tell you what I think is really going to occur here and what is really happening. Uh, TID Radio, you got caught. Uh, you were selling radios with fake FCC IDs, much like I caught Redivis doing it. And I think I've caught other people doing it. I'll buy radios that don't have FCC IDs as long as I'm not being lied to. And I'll check them for spectrum purity and so forth. 
but you got caught selling radios with fake FCC IDs and now you're trying to cover your tracks. And I think what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up taking this radio, one of these radios, you're going to modify it. So it is FCC compliant. You're going to send it to the FCC. They're going to test it. They're going to approve it and nothing is going to change. You're going to still sell all the radios that you've already made that are definitely according to my testing, not within FCC regulations. And that's a shame. Uh, so what I'm hoping happens is you offer all those people who bought this radio over Prime Day on your website, wherever it is, you offer them a refund or you offer them a new radio in exchange for the one that is definitely not within FCC regulations, according to my testing. And then I think maybe we're on the right track here to some honesty. Now, in the last episode, I mentioned some more stuff about it. I'm not here to shame you for what radio you choose to use on GMRS or on ham radio, provided even if it's not FCC certified, but provided it does have some kind of spectrum purity, that is a big thing. I, I don't want anybody out there to get hurt. And, you know, I guess we're going to see where this goes. I'm going to tell you right now that this gentleman that I'm working for, testing for, testing for, I'm not getting paid. I'm not working for them. Uh, let's clear, <laughs> clear that up right now. Or who represents TID Radio, who uh, may be actually not part of TID Radio, like initially uh, presented to me. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that uh, he's making efforts forward to try to to fix or backpedal on some of the things that were wrong as far as some of the things that never should have been advertised. They never did mention it in that page about the battery being misadvertised as well. I don't think they thought anybody was going to test the battery, but then again, I don't think they thought anybody was going to test much of this. Um, I will say definitely, though, I really do appreciate uh, – Everything else aside, I do appreciate that they're listening to some of the issues about the firmware and they're fixing them. They're, they're working to get them fixed and they're establishing some kind of or attempting, <laughs> attempting to establish some kind of dominance, a presence. They're trying to establish a presence within the amateur ham GMRS community, uh, the wireless communications uh, fields. And, uh, you know, you just don't do that starting off uh, stealing data information and, you know, selling a garbage radio under false pretenses. So I wanted to provide that update today because I think it's fair. I think I think I wanted to let you know that, hey, even though I, I on them, they still gave a, an effort to respond to me and said they're working on fixing it. I'm going to buy the next radio, the next H8 that's released. I'm going to buy it as a consumer and I'm going to see what I get. Actually, I'm going to buy two of them. I'm going to buy one directly from TID Radio. I'm going to buy one from Amazon, not under my name either. And we're going to see when those radios are released, if there's any difference. We'll open them up. We'll see if anything has changed internally. We'll check them on the spectrum. We'll test the batteries. Um, so there is going to be a part two, a part three, a part four, uh, because I'm actually now kind of curious of where this goes. And, um, you know, if I didn't speak up, would would they have just kept selling a uncertified splatter box? Anyway, hey, you know, I had a fun time doing this, and and I hope I don't sound like I'm complaining too much. I'm passionate. Uh, I hope you have a great day. I'm Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9FFF, Ham Radio Dude, 73.